Good evening, everybody. It's Mike with the Claim Squad Public Adjusters bringing you another video today. If you need to get a hold of me, if you have any questions, here's how you can do so. Please, if you don't like insurance companies, like my channel, subscribe to it for videos you'll receive on a regular basis. So today's video, we're going to be talking about why your homeowner's policy is almost worthless. Just a brief disclaimer here. Now this content is only my opinion. I'm not giving you any advice on what you should do with your homeowner's policy. I'm not going to recommend anything on what you should do. I'm just giving you kind of a background on some things that have developed regarding your policy to help you make an educated decision on your own. Talk to your agent, but careful with trusting your agent completely. That word behind my little photo there, my little uh, video box is completely. The reason why I say this, if you've seen some of my other videos, you will note that your agent may not be your best resource or the best person to trust for a insurance policy. So this whole concept I started thinking about when it comes to whether or not your insurance policy is basically getting to the point where it's worthless um, is especially true to the people who live in Florida. It's also starting to apply to other areas of the country, but really Floridians, our policies are starting to really deteriorate as far as the value that it brings to us as homeowners. And we're going to get into the specifics. So let's briefly take a look at some of the reasons we're going to peel back some of the layers that contribute to my thoughts on why our policies are becoming less valuable and really becoming more of nothing but a bill that you get nothing for on a monthly yearly basis so we have reduced mode coverage of ten thousand dollars now um, this coverage is not going to prove valuable to most people okay water damage many companies now are doing a water damage limit of ten thousand so now, starting July 1st, any new policies because of these new roof laws, they're going to have a different angle on depreciation. You're going to have two different deductibles, the building code adjustment. All right. All this is cutting into the coverage of your policy. So if you're limited on everything, what's your policy worth? Okay, so let's take a look at covered losses okay where it's 100 percent limitation free coverage meaning there's no limitations but there are two where there are limitations currently and what this list is just to give you an idea for those that are new to insurance policy this is an ho3 policy the most typical homeowner policy that you will get called HO3. All of these, fire, hurricane, explosion, these are what we call perils. Okay, P-E-R-I-L-S. I-L-S. Perils. These are the covered losses that you typically find. All right. So here are the only ones that have no limitations right now. Hurricane, some policies are writing some hurricane limitations. These would not be Florida-based, but companies that are outside of Florida, the Kin, the Geoveras, the um, Velocity, some of these weird companies that come from out of state. But so this is 100%, no limitations. Okay, a fire, explosion, riot, theft vandalism smoke vehicles vehicles if a vehicle comes smashing in your house aircraft aircraft falls into your house 
falling objects, weight, ice, and snow. Floridians, we don't have to worry about this. This is limited in many policies in Florida, not all, and also around the country. Sudden and accidental damage from electrical current. Okay, so these two are the most frequent we have in Florida besides mold. All right, so you see the limitations and the things that you have 100% coverage for, it's like one in 30,000. I, I don't know what a fire is for homeowners. I used to know those stats. I don't know it anymore. So other than this, nobody really has these issues. I, I haven't had a theft, vandalism, smoke, vehicle, aircraft, explosion, or riot claim. I, I can't remember. I don't even know if I've had, I've had vandalism and theft. Um, but all these others I haven't had, obviously not weight, ice, and snow, no falling objects. Um, as, as far as homeowners, there's some goofy stuff that happens with, with this during the whole, um, riots a few years ago with BLM and TIFA and all that. Some people call me on that, not in Florida, but some other areas. Um, and the falling object was also taken into consideration, the riots. So that's about it. So here's a couple others. Again, Floridians, uh, obviously people in Hawaii only for this one. So you can cross that out. Sinkhole policies you have to pay additional money for now in Florida. All right, so we don't have to worry about that. And any other peril specifically excluded. This is part of the HO3. So these are the other ones with limitation free coverage. So what are some of the other main coverages in an HO3 policy? Obviously your personal property, additional living expenses, law ordinance. All right. I'm going to talk about these three in a little bit greater detail. Okay, so this is where we explore an alternative. DP1, is it for you? Here's why I would have placed the HO3. Now, just as an asterisk, some insurance companies will want you to have a tenant in the DP1, all right? What some people do is if they have a second home, if they have another address, they put it down. If they rent it to a family member, um, there's ways that you can qualify for the DP1. And um, the main attractive part of a DP1 is the cost savings. You're gonna have substantial savings if your HO3 policy is over $4,000. So it covers all the main perils, all those ones we talked about before. They're all covered underneath the DP1. But what you're gonna find out, again, you can't see this word behind my video box, is that it doesn't some, include some things you might find on the HO3 and we're gonna go through those items so here we go what does it cover all the main perils as I discussed fire hurricane windstorm hail explosion riot aircraft vehicles etc that's what I talked about on a couple slides ago that we saw with the HO3 so the DP1 covers all these things no limitations nothing like that so here's what the DP-1 doesn't cover. It doesn't have any water coverage. So no accidental discharge or overflow of water. Water is not covered. If you currently have a $10,000 water damage limit, does it matter? And here's my point with the DP-1. If you have a $10,000 water damage limit, and all these insurance companies are writing this now, they're all writing it, trying to, Companies that don't write it are State Farm, Progressive, um, Allstate, Allstate, uh, UPC, Universal. There's some others that don't. If you have a newer house, if you have an older house, they're going to write a $10,000 water damage limit. So. If you have a $10,000 water damage limit, you have to, and your policy is over $4,000 for an HO3. The $10,000, if you have a significant water damage loss, 
isn't going to do anything catastrophic. It's just going to be a drop in a bucket. So let's say you have kitchen cabinets and floors that are ruined. Does a $10,000 help? Yeah, but if you're paying an exuberant amount of policy fees, premiums, you've got to weigh out the cost-benefit ratio of that versus... And, and then the other part is getting them to pay the $10,000. Just because you have a $10,000 water damage limit doesn't mean they just write you a check if you have something more than $10,000. You're still going to have to fight for that. I have cast iron pipe claims with $10,000 water damage limit that we actually have to file lawsuits on because the insurance company won't pay. So you just have to weigh it out in your mind. How much is that $10,000 worth? For me, um, I could tell you if it was me, my opinion, I would, and, and the quotes I got for one of my policies on my house, which is 2,400 square feet, was almost 10 grand, 9,800, okay? A DP1 was less than $3,000. That's a $6,000, $7,000 difference. For me, that's worthwhile in getting a DP1. I will accept the 10, and oh, by the way, the policy that I was quoted on had a $10,000 water damage limit. So I will forgo, I don't care about the 10,000. If I have something major, the 10,000 is not going to matter to me whatsoever. I'm, I'm going to be screwed either way. So I'd rather take that 7,000 and invest it. And, and after one time of the policy renewing, I've already made and saved 14,000. I'm ahead of the game. I'm ahead of the game. So you have to do the math and, and whatever your risk tolerance is. So I mentioned I mentioned I was gonna come back to these items. Okay, these are items also not included. Additional living expenses, law, ordinance, personal property, clothes, anything of personal items, furniture. Now, you might be like, wait a minute, I'm not going, and I'm gonna tell you this I'm on a real world experience level. I'm not going with you know, my personal property, guys, out of I'm going to say, now let's start from personal property. One out of 20 to 30 claims, maybe, do I have people that have personal property? And the last one we had was just a couple thousand dollars. I'm working on a couple right now. And, and one is somewhat significant. Um... I think around 10,000, but other than that, the other one I currently have that I'm thinking off the top of my head is less than 2,000. There's not many claims that people are actually claiming personal property on, believe it or not. So this isn't, for me, if I'm looking at it, I don't care about the personal property. The only thing you have to worry about the personal property would be the fire, because then everything's ruined, right? So again, you have to weigh the risks. Law and ordinance? This is rarely used. One out of one out of fifty. I have one. It's a fire being used. We may be using this more into the roof claims because of the new roof laws. We have an idea there, but gosh, it might even be one in a hundred. We don't use this very often, so it doesn't. That's why, uh, for me personally. A DP1 makes more sense. I, I, I don't see myself using this. Additional living expenses. So loss of use. That might be same as personal property. I think I've, I've had one that fire claim. I have a water damage claim. Another water damage claim. I'm just looking at my current active cases real quick claims that's it that's it so loss of use is when your home is badly damaged or there's mold or whatever the case may be that I think oh, I have another mold situation where you can't or don't want to live in your home so the insurance company pays for you to live somewhere else that there's not a lot of that additional living expense for food let me tell you how foods calculated so let's say you're out of your home for a fire 
and you normally spend two thousand dollars a month for food um, whatever you spend above that two thousand is what the insurance company will, will compensate you for so let's say spend two thousand this month you're out of your home you spend four thousand the insurance company should reimburse you that other two thousand you normally spend two you have to spend an extra two thousand because you're not in your home so that's four thousand they should reimburse you that two thousand for what you spend additionally I, I i don't get many of those people just don't use these coverages much okay so let's take a look why doesn't the dp1 get recommended by insurance agents insurance companies simple you remember jerry Maguire and uh the movie which with with us um gosh i forgot the name of the movie but tom cruise show me the money that's it that's simple it's that simple it's the reason why they don't they don't recommend it or give you the option ho3s cost a lot more money than the um than the dp1 All right, so what can you do? What can you do if you have all these limitations on your policy, right? Maybe you didn't know about it. So Floridians, if you face a water damage limitation of 10,000 water damage exclusion, contact the Office of Insurance Regulation, complain to them. Contact the Department of Financial Services, contact the governor and your local representative democrat or republican you've got to voice it so that things get changed okay so in closing with insurance companies in florida especially but also around the usa paying politicians to pass laws that help the insurance company and hurt you the homeowner your policy is heading to the point of being little to no benefit to you so if you own your home is self-insured the way to go i don't know i don't know and then finally look into the dp1 look into the dp1 if that interests you depending how much you're paying right now my name's mike with the claim squad public adjusters you know how to get a hold of me from the slide in the beginning of the video and um, if you have any questions on a homeowner's claim, any type of claim, um, give me a call. Let me know if uh, you need help with a specific claim, roof, water, fire. You can get a hold of me. I'm always available. People call me from around the U.S. just looking for a little bit of advice, a little bit of help, or a little bit of consultation on what they can do to get their claims paid by the uh, insurance company. So hopefully you enjoy this video.